scanning with mobile devices has been possible for a while, but using 360 cameras to capture entire environments is an exciting new opportunity. Even though 360 footage can see in every direction, into every corner, it's not directly usable for 3D production. Equi rectangular images are heavily distorted and most computer vision systems can't interpret them properly. That's why I developed the 360 extractor tool for Blender. With this add-on you can easily and visually cut out the exact viewing angles you need from a 360 video and use those extracted images to generate 3D models and environments. Blender itself is a fantastic platform for this kind of work. While it's primarily known for 3D modeling, it has grown into a full-featured production tool capable of visual effects, 2D drawings and even video editing. So why not use it to process 360 footage as well? And even if you never used Blender before, don't worry. In this video I'll show you exactly how to use this extractor tool to produce the image sets you need for your 3D projects. So let's get started. Okay, as a starting point I assume that you already have some basic understanding of how to produce usable 3D scanning material with cameras and how images works best when captured from at least three different heights. I have built a special scanning wand for myself, which allows me to capture environments from three different heights at once. Since I have three 360 cameras in there that are recording simultaneously. But a scanning device like this is totally optional. The same process can also be done with a single 360 camera. It just takes a little more time and is not that efficient, as you have to walk the same road three times and record the scanning material from three different heights. Then if you are using Insta360 Studio to upload your videos from your 360 cameras, one very important feature is to make sure that this direction lock is turned on before exporting the videos. Otherwise you will see yourself drifting around the frame and since the idea is to void angles where you as the camera operator are visible, it is important to lock the rotation so that your character remains roughly in the same place during the scanning video. In any case, the end result should be several full 360 videos that are in an equi-rectangular format that looks like this. Then we get to the real deal. Now we can open Blender and use the 360 extractor tool, which can be found in this so-called N panel, because the shortcut key N allows us to access the menu. At the top of the extractor tool there is a button where we can load 360 videos. And you can import several files at once. So this list works a bit like an asset browser of the video editor, where you will import all the necessary video files before you start editing. When files are imported, the add-on automatically activates the latest one and puts it in the background of the Blender's viewport. And you can rotate the view by pressing middle button of your mouse and dragging around. With this trash can you can remove your files from the list. And in addition you can also activate the video you have selected and check how it looks in the background of the 3D space by pressing this activation button. It is good to understand that this 360 background is only visible when the correct viewport shading mode is activated. So here in the top right corner of the viewport we have these four different mode buttons that changes between wireframe, solid and material input. The 
360 background is visible when this rendered mode is on. But then we perhaps should get rid of these Blender's default cube, camera and light. And it can be done simply by pressing a shortcut key A and then deleting them with the delete button from the keyboard. Now that our plate is clean, we can start building the actual viewing angles. Here we have the camera setup section. And from this name field, I can give a name for my first camera group. I will type a name high for the first one. Here the camera count value determines how many cameras will be generated to the group. You can create as many cameras as you want, but I recommend to keep it rather low readings. Default is 8 cameras and that is what we are going to use. Then we just press this create camera group button. And in the viewport we can see that we have now 8 camera elements in a ring here. But then comes the important step. We need to link the video to this group. And from this link field we choose which video this particular group of cameras should see. I choose the video that indicates the high angle material. So after the linkage the video will be activated in the background and now when we want to see what kind of a view each camera is seeing from the ring we need to duckle this camera icon button in here. Also the shortcut key zero from the numpad does the same thing. Viewport will jump to the first activated camera and now from this outliner list we are able to switch to the next camera view by activating them one by one from these green camera icons. So this high angle looks pretty clean and all the cameras are seeing nice piece of this high angle 360 footage. This rectangle here represents the aspect ratio and it is a basic 16 by 9 by default. I have found that the one by one aspect ratio works better for the 3D datasets. So I'll change it from this output menu. Here I can enter 1920 by 1920 resolution to have a nice square images. This next phase is totally optional, but for the visual purposes I will slide another viewport here from the left so that we can see both the camera setup and the camera view side by side. In this way I can better explain how these next setting function works. Here on the top of that link function we have these three sliders. This is also just for the visual purposes since changing the height won't of course affect the actual video. But it is nice small feature that helps you to reconstruct how the cameras were in the real world when you scanned the material. The rotation offset will rotate the whole group from the center point and this way we can choose where the cameras should point on the z-axel. I can also type and give the value numerically and enter exact 180 degrees. From tilt angle I can either look up or down and tilt all the cameras at once. Since we are now manipulating the highest angle it is practical to look slightly downwards from here so that we can see the important details from the ground. I have found that minus 30 degrees is a good value in here. But again when we go through each of these cameras we will eventually see that my character will be visible on three of these cameras. And the setup like this, these cameras are number 6, 7 and 8. So for these cameras I can now do a little trick. I shift select them from the outliner list and then I press this make new group from selection button. Then I give this group a new name like sub high and when I hit the OK it creates a new group and moves these three angles in the new group. 
So for this new group I can now give a totally new values and, and refine its tilting angles back to zero so that I am no longer visible in the setup. This way we get to have all eight camera angles from the high video so the coverage will be full and perfect from here. So let's continue to create a camera group for the middle footage. I'll simply just type mid in this name field and again press this create camera group button. A new set of eight cameras will appear and this time I'll let it to be on its default height position. Again I need to remember the link the group to see the correct video file which was made for it. For this group I made similar settings and rotate the whole group 180 degrees, same way as the high group. And as before, when I go through the setup by activating these cameras, I can again see that I, as the scanner operator, am again visible on these three angles. This time the tilting and subgrouping trick won't work and we can't bypass my appearance. So the solution is to remove these angles from the group. And it happens simply just by shift selecting these cameras from the outliner list and pressing the delete key from the keyboard. A minor thing should be noted in here. When we use delete key and remove cameras from the group, the view jumps out from the cameras, but you can easily get back into the view by activating one of the cameras and hitting again the cameras duckle button. So even though we have now only five cameras here in the middle, it is still plenty enough and works fine with the project. Now there is only one group left and that is group called low. This one works almost the same as the previous ones, except I set its height value to low. And since it is a low angle, it is the most practical to look up from here. We will have to do the same removing operation on this angle as well, since my feet are now covering the most of the views on these three angles, and the tilting towards the ground won't give us a usable solution. We will have to delete them in the same way as we did in the middle group. Okay, we starting to get ready with this camera setup. The camera groups I created in this process contains a total of 18 angles that it extracts from the three different videos. And now that we are ready to render them, we just need to determine from which part of the video those angles will be extracted. But before that, it is important to define output path where the images will be rendered. Just choose a nice location from your hard drive and create a new folder in there. When we drag this Q pointer here in the timeline, we can see that the video starts to move. It is quite heavy to display and scrub video background in Blender, especially when this material is from quite a heavy file and it is in 8K resolution. But from the frame counter we can see that the whole 360 video and all its frames are in the timeline. And eventually we do not need all the frames from the video. So this step value comes very handy in here. Since I know that these videos are recorded at the 30 frames per second, we can set this step value to 30. This way we will render the 18 images on every second of those videos. And if that seems to be too tight interval, we can raise it to 60 and then it render only every 2 seconds. This end frame value here means that when it is set to zero, it will render the video from its full length with the interval that is given in the step value. So if you want to play safe, I recommend that you make first a little practice rendering. Let's say that you want to end the rendering after 220 frames. 
And now, when you hit the Render Selected Groups button, you will get this small pop-up notice that tells you what you are doing and collecting info, how many images you are rendering eventually. The reason why we need to be sure is that when we launch the rendering from Blender, it is very difficult to stop the process. And if you accidentally launch a huge rendering process, you either need to wait until the Blender has finished the rendering, or you need to force quit the program from the task manager, and then you will lose the project if you didn't remember to save. That's why it is good to make a small batch render with the small amount of frames first and see that everything works fine and the 360 extractor is producing right kind of images. But then again, you have also an option to render only the groups which are selected in the group list. With this simple checkbox, you can choose which groups will be included in the rendering and which not. All in all, when you are ready to render all the videos, you can press the OK button and follow how the rendering progresses from the File Explorer window. And there you will notice that all the created groups will get their own folder where the extractor tool will organize and drop the images. Here these images are now rendered as a PNG sequences, but if you want to change the file type to something else like JPEGs, before rendering you can change the image format from output menu and choose the format you like in here. There is still one cool and important feature which makes using this extractor tool much faster and easier in further use. You are able to save these camera group settings as a template file. This way you don't need to generate the whole setup from the beginning each time you want to extract images out from your 360 footages. The template can be saved from this button and you can save it as a JSON file wherever you want. And likewise, the opening this file will happen from this button here. Just one thing needs to be remembered when you open the camera group template. You will need to set the linking to the correct videos again. Otherwise, the tool won't render anything. Finally, when you have managed to extract and render the images out successfully, you can then drag these files, for example, to Reality Scan program, or you can also drop them into the PostShot software and start further processing 3D models out from them in those. Processing large image sets can take a lot of time to calculate and train but in the end it is worth when you manage to get some great Gaussian splatting models out from it. Alright, I hope this tutorial was useful and explained the use of this Blender add-on that I have developing for a while now. If you are interested in the 360 Extractor tool, I have now released it and you can find it in my Gumroad online store. And the link to this can be found in the description. I highly appreciate if you end up purchasing this software. It will support my channel and help me produce more of these videos in the future. I am very excited about 3D scanning and capturing environments with 360 cameras. So let's continue from here. Thanks for watching.